guys, welcome to the Oracle of Lilith. My name is Amy and today I'm doing a pick a card all about the messages the universe has for you. This is going to be a high vibe reading. We're going to get into the positive messages the universe has for you. So if this is your first time to my channel, hi, hello, how are you? It's so good to have you. I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel and becoming a member of my tribe. If you're a returning subscriber, hey guys, what what is up? How are you? It's always good to connect with your energy and I truly appreciate you guys being here. Now keep in mind this is a general reading. It's a general session so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. I do offer personal and private readings and sessions. All that information is down in my description box below. You will actually find a link to my new website. There's a page on my website that lists all my uh, current offerings for sessions and readings and at the bottom is a little FAQ on my readings and how they're delivered and whatnot. All right, so these are going to be your psychic linking objects. I'm going to have three uh, three selections, three groups today. I'm going to be pulling as I go. Um, so the first group, I'm going to show you each group close up. Um, we have three crystals and three decks to choose from. All right, so, so let's get into the cards. Group one, you are the metaphysical cannabis deck. And your crystal is going to be a turquoise crystal or stone. Group two, you are the star seed oracle, and your stone or crystal is Rosetta Jasper. All right, group three, your deck is Cali Love Vibes Oracle. And your crystal or stone is going to be lapis lazuli. All right, guys. So those are going to be your groups. I will insert a video with some backing music so you guys can kind of chill out and see which group you're drawn to. If you're drawn to more than one group, there's probably more than one message here for you. And with that said, I'll see you beautiful, magical creatures on the other side. Bye, guys. Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answered a no, man, I still go Go, 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 go Hustle out, hustle every single day I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave to the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway And in the driveway, is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain You'll never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief uh, They'll deceive with the negativity But I just slide right by that energy uh, Even when you feel low, you can still go even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answered a no, man, I still go Go, 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 go but even that could change You could flip the gray matter Like some batter in your brain uh, That's why they say Fake it till you make it, eh And if you play that game Then you just might make a change Rearrange all the bad to okay Take the worst stuff saying Turn them to a game Take the best stuff saying Put them on display On repeat in your brain Till you're feeling no more pain uh, Never slow yourself down You can do some more Push past start a pain And you'll find a door Open it up And finally explore everything you can never do before uh. And even when you feel low You can still go Even when you feel slow You can still go Even when there's no hope You can still go I never answered a no Man, I still go Go, 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 go
Hey group one, all of you that selected a turquoise or you were drawn to the metaphysical cannabis deck, this is going to be your reading all about the messages the universe has for you. This is a high vibe reading with positive messages from the universe. I don't know about you guys, but I could use some positive messages. <laughs> the last couple of weeks has been intense, lots of intense energy. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Schumann Residence, um, but it is the frequency of our planet and it's been going up and down. It's been spiking uh, sometimes into the 60s and 90 hertz. And I think it's usually somewhere around 6 or 7 hertz. Um, and there are days we kind of set around 9 hertz. Uh, this has to do with a lot of the solar flares we've been getting uh, from the sun and just a lot of strange activity. So um, yeah, we have food meditation. I can beautiful energy. I love, love this deck. This is such a good vibe deck. Even if you don't partake of um, the herb, uh, this is a beautiful deck. Lots of beautiful energy, uh, really expansive energy. Um, and I'm feeling like this card to me is speaking of like self-love. Um, this is speaking of coming into a time where you let go of issues. If you have issues around food um, or body image, uh, it feels like those things are being healed. You know, there comes a time in our life where um, it's almost like you have to kind of surrender to the presence of your vessel, what it has manifested to be. You know, um, your body is your vessel in this experience, in this dimension. It's how you experience this dimension. Your vessel is not who you are. You are not your body. Your body is a tool of experience. Nothing more and nothing less. Yes, we should take care of it. Yes, we should, uh, you know, feed it good things, have good experiences, you know, run, work out, do those good things for it, but in balance, you know, and our bodies are meant to be certain ways, you know, we're created with biology and DNA and all kinds of things. Um, so honor your vessel, how it was born to be, give it peace. And that's a very difficult thing to do sometimes, you know, especially when you're someone who has been at war with your vessel because it didn't fit the society image of how you should be. I feel like we're coming into a time where I see society, I see the people in positions of power trying to uh, go back, especially with feminine energies, trying to bring up the idea of um, like heroin chic and things like that, which were very destructive, um, extremely toxic. Um, feminine bodies, bodies in general are not fashion statements. They are literally living biological systems that are part of the planet. Um, and they are what we travel in in this dimensional space and they should be honored as that. Your body is valid as it is. It's not a fashion statement, okay? It's your vessel and it should be honored as your vessel, but it is not ultimately who you are, all right? So um, yeah, and be good to it. Feed it good things. Have some chocolate, have some grapes, <laughs> you know? Uh, keep in mind this is a general reading. It's a general uh, session, so just take what resonates here and leave the rest behind. Uh, we have, I'm not reading any reversals, we have initiation. This feels like the hangman, okay? Um, I feel like a lot of you guys are moving into an energy where you're taking a new look, a new perspective. You may be reevaluating how you see yourself, how you see the world, how you see your body, your relationship with your body, your relationship with yourself. It is really good and a sign of spiritual maturity when we're willing to like step back, even from relationships, like get some space for yourself. Take some time. It doesn't mean you have to break up with someone. It doesn't mean like you have to cut people off, but just get some space and start really thinking about your relationship ships with yourself, with others. Is it feeding you? Are you blocking in some way? Are you blocking yourself? Are you being nice to yourself? Are you playing old patterns? Are you judging your vessel? Are you judging yourself um, as you are? Are you trying to force yourself to be something that you cannot be? Are you trying to fit in a mold that was never yours in the first place instead of honoring the truth of who you truly are? 
you know, you were born to be who you are, not who society or your parents or anyone else projects upon you. You are your own projection, okay? And it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's magical. And it's time for you to kind of step into that, you know, um, there's a lot of oppressive energy that seems to be, um, it's as if, it's as if there's energies around society that feels the freedom that some people are starting to feel, the awakening process, the freedom in the vessel, the freedom to look at themselves as sovereign beings, and they don't like it. This energy doesn't like it, so they try to oppress with bringing up, bringing back, although it was always around, these oppressive energies about image and body and things like that. And the thing is, is that what it does is it, it rings out of you. I, I'm seeing like a towel ring out. It rings your wildness out. It rings your primal state out. It rings out your natural way of being. And so the beauty of you, the magic of you, the wonder of you is just ringed out and you're left with like a damp towel. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's got no weight. It's, it's got no depth, you know, um, and that's what they want because it's easy to control people who are trying to be a damp towel instead of a big, big old wet towel full of all kinds of emotions and real and sloppy sometimes that can clean stuff up, is useful and effective, um, and knows that they're a wet towel. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a wet towel wasn't a good analogy or whatever, but that's what we got. That's what we got today. <laughs> All right, let me shuffle this up again, and I got these long nails on, you guys, and the shuffling is, I don't know, it's kind of hard. <laughs> All right, what else do we got here? So, uh, taking a new view on life, you know, life is to enjoy, and I know that it is fucking scary right now. There is so much crazy shit going on in the world for real, and let me tell you something. The powers that be are trying real, real hard to scare everybody because when you're in a state of fear, you are more controllable, okay? Group one, there's something about you guys here getting free from fear and control that makes you more wild and primal, and that is going to make you even more powerful because when you're not bowing down to other people's expectations, society, your parents, whoever, whoever this is, uh, you really go into a place within that is the root of your power and you begin to do things in really effective ways. You get clarity, you get vision, you get focus. Okay, we have compassion. Yeah, you know what? Um, I feel like even though things are hard, you know, milk is like $12,000, <laughs> you know, I've given up eating eggs, you guys. I don't need eggs. It's fine. I'm a vegetarian most of the time. And eggs are, eggs? Eggs are part of a vegetarian diet. But you know what? I don't really like them anyway, so I don't need eggs. You know, um, I feel like with all this hardship a lot of people are going through, just trying to put food on the table, I think it's breeding a lot of compassion. I've noticed that. Like, people are starting to understand. People who have never had problems putting food on the table are now having problems. And their eyes are opened. And they're like, oh, shit. You know, I make $100,000 a year. And now when I go to Whole Foods, you know, it's costing me like $500 to put groceries on the table for a week or whatever. That's a lot of money for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, even the people who make good, what considered good money in this country, I guess, USA, uh, are having a hard time. Like, they're seeing their bills go up. They're seeing their savings depleted. And I feel like people who have never had compassion for others who are struggling are starting to see the picture. And the opposite is happening. The people who have never had compassion are becoming more hardened against people who are struggling. And the problem is, is that there are more of us struggling now than probably ever have. Not, I don't want to say ever because, you know, we had the Great Depression. But a lot of us are. A lot of us are trying to figure out how to feed our kids every day. You know, it's a real, real struggle. We're worried about the rent situation and stuff like that. And I think the outcome of this is that we're going to learn that we are our brother's keeper in a lot of ways. Like, this is a community. We are a community, the human family. And it's time that we start thinking about each other. You know, um, I'm of the belief that I believe there are certain fundamental rights that you have when you're born on the planet. 
And that is housing, food, health care, schooling. I feel like those are just human rights, okay? Just it, when you're born, you know? Um, and I know that there's a lot of opposition to like this compassionate viewpoint in the world. And the thing is, is that there are more of us, I believe, that have this compassionate spirit. I think the average person doesn't want to see other people suffer. They don't want to see homeless people. They don't want to see people go hungry. They don't want to think about people having to choose between, you know, feeding their babies and putting roofs over their head, you know? And the thing is, is that when you build this compassion for self, it can start with compassion for your vessel, compassion for yourself, compassion for what you've been through. You take a new point of view with yourself and you look at yourself like with everything you're going through, everything you've been through. You know, as a world, we've been traumatized by the need to socially isolate and go through this constant, like, almost, you know, traumatic situation, some would say even a gaslighting situation with what's going on with the healthcare around the world, with the, the thing that we had to socially distance from. You know, we are a traumatized society and um, this compassion that we start building for ourselves, it grows as above, so below, as within, so without. And what we're going to see is the compassion is going to build, it is building. And a lot of us are sick to death of seeing the ruthlessness in the world. And as more of this ruthlessness is revealed, and honey, it's bad. It's so bad. Bad isn't even a word. You know, I, I, I believe that wickedness, evil, is violations of people's will. I believe that is what, like, evil is. And that's going to be uncovered in our world even more. And it's so bad. It's so awful. It's so horrible. Um, and I feel like as a species, like as a human race, it is going to help us cultivate compassion. It's going to help us see human us see humanity in each other. They have tried to program that out of us on mass, in mass, however you say it. It starts in school. You know, it starts with the programming of, you know, um, trying to get us to disconnect from our creativity, from our intuition as children. You know, uh, it's like school, school doesn't seem to really, um, and I love teachers. I've had some really great teachers. I don't think teachers are the problem. I think the institution is the way we, we have it set up. Okay, because I feel like school doesn't really encourage like creativity and creative learning. It encourages like order and structure and discipline and um, abiding by rules and that kind of stuff. And yes, we need order and structure. But I think as a people, we lose a lot of our wonder and creativity by these institutions and programs and I think we can do better and now with technology I think we just open the door up for us to have more of a sense of wonder and cultivate more of uh, the wonder and creativity in learning with our kids and I'm really excited for the next generation because I feel like we have some wonderful teachers who aren't afraid of technology they're not afraid of change in fact they want change they want to grow the uh, education system in new ways. And I think that's really exciting because I feel like uh, there's a new kind of education where we teach children about compassion. We teach children about the world as it really is, about the power of imagination. Uh, imagination's where we got computers in the first place. Imagination is where we get some of the best inventions that we have, like medical science and things like that. You know, we have to be able to think in creative ways. And we don't think of, you know, science and things like that as a creative thought process. But you do use creative thinking in a more or organized way. But you're thinking outside the box when you discover things. You have to be able to take chances. You have to be able to roll the dice. And that comes with that creative mind. So, yeah, I, I feel like I've gone off on something, but... That's for you guys, so you take what resonates, okay? We have Blueprint, Unconditional Love. Yes, this is beautiful. And, you know, unconditional love starts at home. It starts with you. It, it starts with you opening up your heart space. And listen, 
listen, I'm going to tell you, this is hard. Okay. I know that when you've been hurt, even when you love somebody, even when you're in like a happy family situation, it's very hard to keep your heart open to someone. Okay. Because the pain of the past, it seems to, those scars run deep, right? And that, and scar tissue forms, you know, and it gets poked at and you get used to things a certain way. And then you find that the scar tissue gets poked at and you kind of have to like, uh, feel uncomfortable. And then you realize that you have to open up a little bit about it and it makes you uncomfortable and you don't want to do it. And you find yourself resisting the love in your life. You find yourself resisting the unconditional love. And I find when that happens, it's really important to take this new perspective, to step back, to reassess how, what is this teaching me? What, is, this is a teachable moment. What am I needing to learn here? Why am I afraid? Why am I afraid to open up? Why am I afraid to love myself unconditionally? Why am I afraid to open up and tell my partner this? What is still the issue? What is the issue here? Because, you know, a lot of these issues, they repeat, they come back up. You know, it's not like one and done. A lot of times our healing is multiple layers over time, you know, and I feel like some of you guys need to forgive yourself. I, I you know, he, like I said, it's not one and done. And just because it comes back up doesn't mean you failed in some way. Okay. It just means that it needs to be revisited. And there are some wounds that you have to visit often. And a lot of times if you've been hurt in relationships, you're going to have to revisit that bitch. Okay. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And it's going to be a work of self-reflection. You're going to be healing that wound. And it's important that your partner know that. And that's why if you find yourself in a situation where you're having trouble communicating, it's good if you can just kind of tell them what's going on a little bit. You don't have to go into detail. You know, you may feel like you've been ripping your heart out for people your whole life. And all of a sudden, with all this energy, you're finding like, you know what? I just don't feel like I should have to do that anymore. And you know what? You shouldn't. It shouldn't feel like you are sacrificing yourself when you share your emotional state with others. Okay. If it's still feeling like a sacrifice, there's something there to heal. There's something more there, okay? So when in doubt, do nothing. Just wait, reflect. There's not a time crunch. And if there's something going on in a relationship and your partner or someone's getting antsy, just tell them, you know, I'm in a state where I'm confused or I'm not sure and I'd rather just kind of like take time and most people will understand that, especially if they know that you've been traumatized. They will give you your space. They will give you your time. And if they don't and they become demanding, that's your cue that something, hey, that something needs to be examined in that relationship. It might be a red flag. It might not, depending. We have glam, glamour energy. Okay. Some of you guys, all of this self-love, all of this releasing your vessel, releasing all the expectations of your vessel and coming into kind of a homeostasis within your vessel, you know, having compassion, taking a new view, loving yourself unconditionally. There's a glow up. And, you know, I'm getting to the point where I hate that term and I shouldn't say that, but it's just, it's, it's so like canned now, like everyone's having a glow up. No, not everyone's having a glow up, you know, uh, getting some new makeup and a new haircut and a new outfit Honey, that ain't a glow up. That's a makeover. A glow up is something that happens within your heart chakra. It happens within your solar plexus. It happens within yourself. And it radiates outward, outwardly. It is a glow up. You are glowing up. And these beautiful changes you make, this healing that you're doing, is radiating outwardly. That's what a glow up is. Okay. So, and I feel that I feel like you're moving into a time where you're going to start feeling really good about yourself. Um, and you're not going to care what other people think of you. And I tell you what, uh, there's a freedom in this. When you stop giving a shit so much about how people judge you or what people think you are free to do and say so much more and express yourself in ways that you never thought you could before. Um, you're also able to reach your potential. 
okay? A lot of times we keep striving to manifest or receive or wherever we are in our process and we're not receiving, we're not seeing it. And it's because we're blocking our potential because we still care too much about what people think of us. Instead of living our truth, instead of saying our truth, instead of showing people who we really are, we're still just too concerned about the haters, about, you know, what our mother thinks or what our neighbor thinks or our partner thinks. And it's time for you to stop caring so much because there's power in that. There's self, what is self-actualization. There's action that comes from that. There is progress beyond what you even think. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us think progress is a place we get to and then we're there. Progress is an ongoing process. You never stop progressing. Your journey isn't in life. Your journey isn't like to a destination. Your journey, it's a journey. Life's a journey. The destination we all get to is we all cross over. Okay. So, you know, that's the truth there. We're all going to get there. We're all going to cross over. It's just uh, when, right? It's just when. So let me get a few more cards here. Let's see. We are at 2111, 2111 on the clock. So lots of ones there. I am going to attempt to shuffle this these cards with my super long nails, you guys. I don't know. All right, <laughs> let's get a few cards. Tell me more spirit about group one. What else universe, universal consciousness, what else do we have for my group one? What flipped over? What flipped over? Okay, we have this card. All right, all right. This one wants to come out too, so I'm going to take it. We have, have you reflected on a transformation and rebirth of your old way of life to a new one? You've already been doing this. This glow up, this process, you guys who don't realize it, you've been doing this the whole time, honey. And let's see, butterfly. You guys may be seeing butterflies. Butterflies may be signs of your progression in this manifestation of your transformation. I see you guys blooming, but you guys need to reflect. Like, you have changed, honey. And... As soon as you like really reflect and see your changes, you're going to probably want to go buy yourself a new shirt. Do it. Okay. I know you don't have no money. Save you, save you some money. Okay. And just go get you a new shirt or something. Treat yourself. Be good to yourself when no one else will, honey, because I'm telling you, love yourself. Be proud of how far you've come. I'm very proud of you. I want you to know. You probably haven't heard anybody say they're proud of you. Because this kind of stuff is very powerful. And it usually brings out haters, jealousy. People usually leave because they don't like what you're becoming. Because people see it. You're busy doing it. You're busy doing this deep work. You're busy probably like crying, eating ice cream, being in bed, you know, feeling a mess, feeling depressed. Uh, and then you have really good days and you don't realize that you're actually processing trauma. You're transmuting energy. You don't see it, but everybody around you does. That's what you've been doing. And you're going to wake up one day and you're just going to be like, damn, I, I did do that. I've done that. Look at me. I am the butterfly. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I need to buy that thing for myself. <laughs> you need to, some of you guys, once you understand what you've done here, your outside and your inside need to match. That's what a glow up is. It's when you let, you allow the outside to match the inside. That's all. That's all. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just you being you. That's it. That's all. Okay. We have unicorn. You got the unicorn, you guys. Are you ready to believe money is coming towards you for your good karma? Boom. Hey, that's good news. Hey, it's hard out here, right? I get you. Like, it's hard. We're all trying to do the best we can with what we got. And I feel like some of this process has to do with your ideas about money. This kind of healing, this kind of glow up energy, when you start feeling worthy, when you know your worth, you start healing money issues because you know you're worthy. 
of money, of things. And it not, it's not just money, it's resources. You're worried of opportunity. You're worried of, you're not worried, you're worthy of good things coming to you. That's powerful. When you know your worth, when you glow up and you embrace and you receive and you live every day and you have good moments where you live and flow, things start happening for you. Things start moving for you. And things just start to unfold. And one of those things is money. Um, and I feel like a lot of you guys have learned lessons about the value of money. You understand it's a tool. Nothing more, nothing less. A, money doesn't make you who you are. Just because you have a million dollars doesn't make you a better person. Just because you have negative a million dollars doesn't make you less than a person. You know, it doesn't make you less than. Money doesn't dictate your worth, but it is a powerful tool that can be used for good and it can be used for harm. You know, it really is all about who you are. And I feel like you have become the kind of person where the universe can flow abundance through you because you understand the power that money has. Like, resources have. Sometimes it's not money. Sometimes it's resources. Sometimes it's building a business and beginning to see the own your own flow of money and resources. So take what you will from that, okay? Well, all right, group one, that's what I got for you. I hope this resonated. If it did or it didn't, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical creatures next time. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Bye, guys. Hey, group two, all of you that selected the Rosetta Jasper or you were drawn to the Starseed Oracle, this is going to be your high vibe reading from the universe. So keep in mind this is a general reading. It's a general session. So just take what resonates here and leave the rest behind. I do offer personal private readings and sessions. A link to my website is down below. So, All right, let's get into this reading and see what messages the universe has for you, group two. All right. Okay. I'm going to start off with like three cards, I think. Three. Let's take this one. Okay, we have rebirth. Oh, no, it's heareth. I don't know why I said rebirth. Okay, longing for home, homesick for the stars. Okay. No reversals. We have the void. Stop. Embrace winter. Great cosmic womb. Okay. Yeah, you guys have been going through it, haven't you? I feel that. You guys may be going through some depression. You may be feeling overwhelmed by what's going on in the world. Um, I feel a weight on my shoulders. You guys may be carrying more of the load than what really is yours. You guys may be starseeds and just me feeling very concerned about what's going on in the world. I feel just a lot of awareness about world politics um, as well. Some of you guys are going through a dark night of the soul, an ascension process. Uh, tell me more. Okay, we have you're not alone, isolation, physical connection, and community. Okay. Um, I want you guys to know this card clearly is telling you you're not alone. Okay. Um, and this Rosetta Jasper, it, it really is about healing, um, healing your heart chakra, uh, a sense of community and connection. And I feel like the universe wants you to get yourself into loving energy. I feel like maybe you guys need to get you a rosy quartz or a Rosetta Jasper. Um, I feel like you need to surround yourself with people who love you. You may need to reconnect with someone, like a friend or something. Um, there's a need here for you guys to not overly isolate yourself. Um, for some of you, there's someone coming in as well. Let's get some more information. Tell me more about what's going on. My nose is itching. You may have some like uh, spirit guides coming in or ancestor energy coming in. Forge, don't follow, pave a new path, be the leader you wish you had. So I feel like you guys may be feeling a little lost, a little disappointed. I feel disappointment here. Um, it's almost like you're waking up and you're seeing the world. It's like waking up in a nightmare. I can relate to this because... Um, 
I've had several awakening processes, and awakening is an ongoing process. Ascension is an ongoing process. Um, and the void, I, I, I'm relating that to a process of waking up in a nightmare. Like you look around your life and you're like, how the hell did I get here? I did not realize my life was so chaotic or so toxic or so bad. How did I let it get this bad? It's like you beat yourself up for allowing your life to get that way. Instead of having compassion for yourself that you know what? Shit happens. Shit happens to good people. And you do the best you can at the time. And group two, you need to stop beating yourself up. You did the best you could at the time. And that's all anyone can ask of you. Would you do differently now? Yes. If you knew what you knew now back then, you would do differently. But you can't go back and change the past. You did the best you could. That's part of the wisdom of learning through your process, learning through experience, is knowing that as you look back, you cannot judge yourself because you didn't know then what you know now. You have to let go of that self-judgment and self-criticism. It is part of what is making you down and depressed. Um, and we have been taught by parental programming, by society's programming, to be self-critical, to hold ourselves to an extremely high standard, how we look, how we act, how we are. And it's weird because society, programming, all of this, social conditioning has told us that there are exceptions, but they're not for us. They're for like rich people or famous people or whatever, special people. And we're not special people because we're average people. And that's just not true. You're a special person. They want you to think you're not. They want you to think that not everyone can be special people. You can be a special person because you are. You're aware. You're more aware than a lot of people are. That's why you feel such heavy energy. That's why you feel the weight of the world. But being overly critical of yourself, you may be thinking that, well, I'm holding myself accountable for my past behavior. I get that. But there's a difference between holding yourself accountable and beating the hell out of yourself for past decisions you made. You know, it's time for you to have some compassion for yourself. Group one, we talked about compassion. Group two, we're gonna talk about self-compassion. You have been through a lot that led you to make the decisions to behave the way you did that led to those things that you are judging yourself for. Remember that. Remember that you were acting out of a pace, place of pain, of lack, of need, of neglect, even abuse or trauma. How can you hold that person, that inner child, to such a high critical standard? You need to love on yourself and stop judging yourself so harshly, okay? Take a new look at yourself and your life and what you've been through. I feel like some of you guys are longing for home, like a home you've never known. And I honestly feel like this is people or a person, okay? So it could be your soul tribe. It could be that you're alone, like you don't have a lot of family, and you're just longing to belong to a group, your tribe. Um, it could be that you're longing for your person or your people. Let's keep going here. Uh, we have cracked open, rock bottom, surrender to the alchemy of life. That is what's going on for you. A lot of these energies, a lot of this heavy density is alchemizing. And you're a little stuck, but that happens to all of us. Where you are right now, we've all been there. All of us who have gone through the, these different levels of ascension, we get stuck on this too. Where you're like, you have such an awareness of what's going on. You have such a spiritual awareness. You haven't quite ascended to the next level, but you're so close but you're able to look back and see all the things you've done and you're just like, wow, how could I do that? I can't believe I did that. And it's not so much shame. It's just like, how did I not see? And that's where self-forgiveness is really powerful. Compassion for self. That's what the universe is cultivating for you. Having compassion for self, forgiving yourself helps you ascend to the next level. 
It helps you get there. It helps you cultivate unconditional love for yourself. And the thing is, is that no matter how concerned you are for the world, for the universe, if you do not love yourself, then you can't really bring that. You can't really be the beacon of light and love in the world because you don't have it for yourself. You know, this thing about, and I talk about it in different videos, but you can't do this work outside in. It's an inside out work. Alchemy is an inside out work. Transmutation is an inside out work. It all starts within you. As above, so below. As within, so without. That's how it works. I've tried the outside stuff. I tried it for years and it does not work. Okay. Um, no matter how hard you try. So self-love is something that the universe is working on with you. And this hard look at yourself, your life, the feelings of depression about not being able to maybe overcome the things you want to in the way you want to, maybe feel even feeling powerless. You may be feeling like the odds are stacked against you. I've been there. I know what it's like to be the underdog. I'm still the underdog. I'm still there, you know. But the difference between an underdog and someone who overcomes that is the fight. Listen, it's okay to pause. Okay, all great champions need a break. Okay, they need a timeout. They got to drink their Gatorade or their water or their green tea in my case. <laughs> they got to take a little, little lap, kind of like work out all the kinks, you know, catch their breath. To go to the next round okay because what you're fighting for is yourself and then those you can help but ultimately it's yourself it's your experience because you're here in this human consciousness experiment if you will to experience things the highs and the lows the joys the pains all of it of the human experience and I feel like you may have, feel like you have a calling on your life, but you're so overwhelmed by all this other stuff that you just can't seem to see how that's going to work out for you. And you're allowing that, that like subconscious calling to overwhelm you when the universe wants you to focus on this self-love thing. If you don't love yourself first, how in the hell is anyone else going to love you? RuPaul, <laughs> the great Saint RuPaul said that, you guys. <laughs> okay, let's get another card. Okay, we have portal. Doors are opening. You decide. Rewards, wild card. All right, so what I'm hearing is that book, not the book, the song. Your book is unwritten by, I forget who's that, who sings that song, you guys. Um but that unwritten song, like your next chapter has not been written yet, okay? You get to decide what you want. And as you reflect back and you're giving yourself a good working over about it and you need to stop, you need to forgive yourself and you need to move on. I know it's hard to let go of the past and it is a process. You don't just wake up one morning and you're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to let everything go and it's everything's peachy keen and it's wonderful. No, it's a process. You know, the past will re-enter your consciousness. You'll be, you know, standing at your kitchen sink and all of a sudden you'll start thinking about something from the past, you know, and revisit it and let it go again. Don't deny it. Don't chase it away like you fear it. Understand it's coming back and instead of running from it, you're going to understand that it's coming back for you to revisit because you're working through the energy. And one day you won't think about it as much and you'll understand the wisdom, like you'll get the lesson. You'll get the meaning of it and you'll love yourself more for it and you'll be able to move on. And part of the self-love is, okay, so now we see the void, we see this, so you're not alone. There are people coming, places, opportunity coming. So what do you want that to look like? Are you lonely? Do you want to have more friends? Like real friends. Not like people who use you and take advantage of you. Like people who get you. Who won't be put off by your emotional needs or maybe what you perceive as your weirdness. Like people who will welcome you. 
People who will understand you because they are similar to you. Maybe it's love. Maybe you're ready to have a partner in your life because you feel lonely and you've never had someone who like who's like really close to you and you need that. And that's okay. It's okay for you to have the vulnerability to say, I want a partner. I want true love. Wanting it is half the battle. But I got to tell you, it's hard for the universe to bring in true love when you don't truly love yourself. And sometimes that's what all the partners that you go through is about. It's about you learning to love yourself and speak your truth. And if you've had a blocked throat chakra or you've had trauma or you've had bad relationships where you've made bad decisions, your self-expression and personal relationships may not be good. And that's part of you learning to love yourself. You love yourself enough to give yourself space, to take up room, to be imperfect and say things that may hurt other people's feelings, but be your truth. You do not have to be nice all the time for people to love you. You can make people mad. You can disappoint people and they'll still love you. You may feel like that's not true. Like when I've disappointed people, they walk away and maybe they have. And that's because those people weren't meant to hang around, whoever they were. It doesn't matter if they're blood. People in this world put so much pressure on the blood bond. And sometimes those blood bonds don't mean shit. We become imprisoned by them. Sometimes your family isn't your blood. And I think it's very important, especially for people who have had really tough family situations to understand that. Sometimes your family isn't your blood. And it opens you up to people coming into your life who take on those roles. Like you may find a mother. You may find a father. You may find a weird cousin. You may find a, a quirky uncle, right? They may fill those roles. You may find people who invite you into their home for the holidays. You may find people who are there with you in times of trial, right? You may find the love of your life, someone who has your back no matter what and understands your weirdness, your perceived weirdness, right? But it really is in the heart of this. It's all about you learning to love yourself because you are wonderful the way you are. And those things you criticize yourself for, you've been through some shit. And you are judging yourself as harshly as the world has judged you. Shouldn't you be giving yourself a break? I'm just saying. If you can't give yourself a break, how do you expect the universe to give you a break? Right? Be good to yourself when no one else will. I, I've been saying that again the last few days. And I just feel like I need to say that to you. Um, I know things are hard. I know there's a lot of stress. A lot of us are eating Raymond noodle soup and not, not because we want to, because we have to. I know it's hard. But don't let what's going on in the world deceive you, okay? It's good to be realistic, but it's also good to know that, you know, the world is full of illusions. And a lot of social conditioning and programming. Things in the world can change as rapidly as they were created. All right. Okay. I feel like getting some tarot for you guys. I didn't for the first group, but I feel like for you. So I'm going to get a few tarot cards and we're going to find out any more messages for my group too. Any more messages? It's, we're going to, I think this is going to be about the people, people, something about a people person, people, persons and yeah okay you know what i feel like i need one more so can i have one more card thank you okay we're not gonna read reversals though we're just not okay oh these are great cards all right so we have i feel this two of pinnacles here so you're moving in a t into a time of balance okay this is what's coming for you a time of balance Okay, the three of wands. So with this balance comes a moment of movement. A moment where all your plans, all your ideas kind of come together and you're ready. You're ready to 
you've got your ducks in a row, like you're ready to make a movement. I, I feel like this could be somebody ready to move towards you. Could be an earth sign, could be a fire sign or a water sign. Okay, so we have a lot of signs there. So it's, you could be at the water sign, they could be the water sign, just take what resonates here. We have a lot of different signs here. But we do have an offer. And honestly, it feels like an offer from a fire sign or for a fire sign because we have the queen of wands here. Okay. Um, and it feels like wish fulfillment. So this could be love. It could be an opportunity uh, in your work. But it feels like relationship. Okay. Um, and I feel like this person is going to be someone who I don't think they're going to rush in. I think this is going to be a very balanced connection. Um, and I'm getting with the three of wands, like this is something that they, they're going to be very strategic about. So they could, and this could be a friend. This could very well be a friend or someone you form a friendship with, um, very close bonds. Um, and I feel like with the Queen of Wands energy, of course, Queen of Wands is the sexiest card in the deck, but it's almost like the universe, the energy that I am channeling isn't really focused on that. They're focused on like their healing ability. Like this person's going to come in and help you heal. Um, they're going to help you see the fire within you, the potential within you. Um, they're going to help you feel more confident and more balanced. Um, they're going to help you with the three of ones energy, like get to the next place. So this could be in work. Okay. For a few of you, uh, we make friends at work. Okay. Um, but for some of you, like this is love, but it doesn't feel like it's straight off, like hot and heavy romantic love. You know, you may be someone who doesn't fall in love easily or your romantic definition may be different from uh, what society tells us should be. So just take what resonates here. But I do feel like deep affection, a warm connection here. Um, and I feel like this is something that's going to make you really happy and it's going to help you uh, move through this portal energy here. Um, I want to clarify the three of wands. So tell me more about this three of wands energy because it's the one energy that I feel like it feels a little bit confusing. Um, it feels almost like, okay, they want to give me three cards, so I'm going to take them. Um, it feels a little bit like hesitant instead of like, I always think of the three of wands as the card, like before you go on the long road trip, like you have the, you have everything planned out. You got your money, you got your hotels, you, you got your car packed, you got all your snacks and you're, you're going to bed the night before and you can't really sleep because you got this big trip. You know, you're excited. You're excited to get on the road. It's, it's, things are fixing to get good, right? But you're not quite ready to go. And so I want to clarify that. Okay. No reversals here. All right. So we have the devil. Okay. We have the queen of cups here. And we have the six of pentacles. Okay. So I feel like this person has had their own issues. Okay. Um, so in many ways, you guys will get along because they understand the struggle. Okay. They will understand where you're coming from. Like they'll be on your level. Like they'll get you. Um, and this person is highly, they probably have some kind of intuition or empathy. Um, and um, this person is a giver. They also might be a Libra. We have the scales here, Aquarius, Gemini. Um, and they're going to be very giving, um, but they have a history of being overly giving. Um, and they want to be sure that they're in balance. So they're going to be very cautious. They're going to be very balanced when they come in. So um, I feel like there will be a mutual attraction, be this at work or whatever. It will be mutual. Okay. They will get you. You'll be able to talk to them. They will be able to talk to you. However, this comes out for you, but they too have struggled. They too have had to break the chains of some kind of like um, issues with the void here. So you guys will have that in common. And I feel like this could be like a partner, someone who's just a really good friend, someone who's going to help you in your job. But this is good news. Like th this is something, someone that's going to help you. Um, 
it's almost like bring new vitality in because it feels like wish fulfillment here. We have nine of cups and then we have another cup. So there's 10 of cups here. They're just not in one card. So I feel like you're going to feel very emotionally fulfilled, very happy with your progress. Um, once you're able to get into this energy of being better to yourself, I think your self-talk may be kind of keeping you uh, in this kind of voided energy. And I would encourage you guys to do affirmations. If you can't get the positive self-talk going on its own, do affirmations, okay? They, they do work. You have to do it consistently. Do it at least 30 days and see what happens. But getting some good positive energy going will help you, all right? And look out for this energy. They could be a fire sign, a Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. They could be a water sign, that's Pisces, Scorpio, um, Cancer. I'm not feeling Cancer as much here, to be honest. Um, and then um, we have a little bit of Earth, Taurus, uh, Virgo, Capricorn. So, you know, that, that spans a lot of different signs. So, all right, group two, that's what I got for you. I hope this resonated. If it did, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd love to have you as a member of my tribe. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical creatures next time. Bye, guys. Hey, group three, all of you that were drawn to the Lapis Lazuli Crystal or you were drawn to the Cali Love Vibes Oracle deck. This is going to be your reading, uh, messages from the universe, your high vibe reading, positive messages from the universe. So keep in mind this is a general reading. It's a general session. So just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. I do offer personal and private readings and sessions. You can find a link to my website down below in the description box along with my social media. All right, let's get some cards here. I feel like Shuffling this up a couple of times. It's kind of hard with these long nails, but we're going to give it a go. <laughs> we're going to try it out once more. Just because. All right. Universe, what messages do you have for my group three? Okay, there's one. We have, be careful how you talk to yourself. You are listening. Be careful how you talk to yourself. Group two. They, they weren't talking to themselves very nicely either. You guys, you need to be nice to yourself, okay? I feel like I feel like a mom or an aunt. Auntie Amy tells you, you need to be nice to yourself. Stop being so mean to yourself. Good grief. The best thing about memories is making them. Yeah, you guys need to make some new memories, okay? Your life, I feel like some of you guys feel like maybe you've gone through a breakup or there's been some kind of loss in a relationship or something here, and you feel like, you know, it's never going to be the same, you know, life is never going to be as sweet or never going to be as good, or, you know, there's just these very, these thoughts that are very, feel very final, okay, and you need to open yourself up and be nice to yourself. You won't see if you can unless you cross the bridge. Yeah, it's time to cross that bridge. It's, it's time to go to new pastures. It's time to think about a new life, a new way of being. What is your next chapter? I feel like for you guys, a chapter has ended and you're kind of beating yourself up. Group two had this energy too. You may have been drawn to group two. Um, and, you know, you, there comes a time when you have to stop beating yourself up, okay? Pay close attention to your friends who don't clap when you win. Some of you guys have people around you who you feel like haven't been there for you, and maybe they haven't, and it's time for you to get rid of those people. It, this may be why you're, you're not good to yourself. It may be why you talk to yourself so horribly, okay? Listen, I used to talk to myself horribly. I would say hateful, horrible things to myself all the time. And this happened, this started when I was a kid, okay? I did it for many, many years. And that kind of stuff manifests into your life, into your relationships, you know? Um, and I feel like you may be the kind of person who, like, an underlying kind of tape has ran in your life where you just don't feel worthy. Maybe you, you hate yourself. Maybe you just don't like who you are. And maybe... Things haven't worked out for you because you've always tried to be the person that other people thought you should be.
and the universe is telling you that it's time for you to be who you really are because there are people who you're never going to please. You, you play it their way. Okay. And are you happy? No. Do they give you any kudos for playing it their way? No. They go on with their life. And now there's a problem. <clears throat> there's a problem because when you stop doing things their way, they're not going to like it and it's going to cause conflict. And then you're going to have to deal with that. But the thing is, is that if you cross this bridge, they're going to be over here and you're going to be way over there. So what they say about you isn't going to matter anymore because you're going to be standing in your power all the way on the other side of the bridge. They can't touch you. Their opinions of you don't matter. Their validation is no longer needed because you already crossed the motherfucking bridge all by yourself, right? You have detached from this codependency. You have detached from this need for their validation. That leads to a happier state of being, okay? It just does. It leads to a, a state of contentment. It doesn't mean you're blissfully, joyfully, unicorn, butterflies, happy all the time. But it does mean there's a level of satisfaction. Because at least if people like you or don't like you, it's based on who you really are and not on some kind of mask or living up to someone's expectation. We have fire element, brave, passionate, confident, desire, direction south. I feel like for you, you may feel like you're lacking. Like you may not feel very inspired right now. You may not feel very confident. You may feel like you don't have a lot of desire for anything. Like you may, you may be feeling very depressed. And part of it is I feel like you're beating yourself up for whatever this thing is that has passed or has happened. Like um, maybe you don't feel important. You don't feel valued. You're going to have to value yourself. And sometimes that makes you look selfish to people and they judge you. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know what? Let him judge you. Okay? Because if the people around you don't want you to do the things that help you facilitate self-care, that help you facilitate your happiness and you walking in the truth of who you are, then those people aren't for you and they're not really your family. And it's better to find that out now than in 20 years. Okay? I'm just telling you. You got to deal with your reality. Okay, because I feel like there's passion, there's confidence coming for you. There's desire coming for you. And some of you guys might be like, it'd be nice to want something again. Like to feel passionate about something again. Somebody, someone, something. I feel like first you got to have some passion for yourself. It's going to take, it's going to take some passion to get across this bridge. Okay. I mean, you just can't walk across that bridge. All right, you're going to you're going to have to like have some get up and go and be focused to get across it cuz like cars go across that bridge too. Right? So you can't get distracted. So it's going to it's going to take some determination. You're going to have to be focused on yourself. Okay? It's time to stop focusing on the past, focusing on the people around you who don't have good intentions and focus on you. All right? Cuz the universe wants to get you back to a level of vitality. That's what the fire element is about. It's about vitality. It's about all the good things, the good flow of energy, the positive chi in your life. We have people being led by spirit do not make any sense to those who are not. Boom. Listen, th I should, this should be on a t-shirt, okay? <laughs> This should be a t-shirt. You do not have to make sense to anyone but yourself right now. It doesn't matter what people think of you. They may think you're out of your mind for going across that bridge. It doesn't matter. It's not their bridge to cross. It's yours. And how you get across it is none of their fucking business, to be honest. Okay? They need to keep their nosy business out of it. It's your bridge. If you want to wear plaid while you cross the bridge, you wear plaid while you cross the bridge. It's none of their business. Okay, it's your fucking bridge. And you let them know that, okay? Listen, this is a powerful statement. I, I had to live this, okay? I had to recognize, especially like accepting my abilities and things and seeing ghosts and all kinds of crazy shit. I had to realize that people, there was going to be a large portion of people that did not get me. 
I was always weird. I was always isolated because I was weird. And it's just better to accept it and to know that, hey, you know, I'm okay with not being for everyone. Like, I'm just not everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. Not everyone is supposed to understand me. Not everyone is supposed to understand you. You're not for everyone, and that's okay. But the people who do get you, awesome. That's your tribe. That's your people. That's your family. And yes, they'll be wearing plaid, walking across that bridge too, honey. They'll be rooting you on. They'll be on the other side saying, hey, we've been waiting for you. Took you long enough. Exactly. So there's passion coming for you. New vitality. There's a sense of confidence in yourself and bravery and how you get there. Okay, we have a sign that you are on the right track, worrying and focus, stop worrying and focus on the positive. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Angel number 222, a sign that you are on the right track, stop worrying and focus on the positive. Yes, stop worrying about what other people think. Stop talking to yourself like you're not a child of God. Stop holding yourself to impossible standards and be free. Liberate yourself from the oppression of others and your past behavior and walk in the truth of who you are and fly across that bridge, okay? 222 two, two is gonna be a sign of alignment for you guys. Angel number one, two, three, four. Have faith in yourself to take the steps to where your soul is guiding you. Have faith. Have faith that you know how to get across this bridge. You know. You know what you need to take. You know what you need to wear. You know when to start walking and when to pause. You know when to sit there and look at the water and reflect on how far you've come across the bridge, how much further you have to go. You know when to take out your little, what is that? Tele, it's not a telescope, but it's a little scope where you see people. What is that called? You know, where you see people a long ways away. You know what I'm talking about. Is it a telescope? Anyway, where you see people, where you can see them, like see people on the other side of the bridge waving at you. Hey, hey, dude, I see you on the bridge. We're waiting for you. Yeah, trust yourself. Trust your journey. Trust your path. Trust yourself. There are people around you right now who have made you not trust yourself. They have made you not feel confident. And it could be this past situation that you've had to let go, a breakup, a job, friends that didn't work out. It's time to make new friends, new connections. Maybe it's time for you to look for another job. But it's definitely time for you to make new memories, okay? There is a whole big old beautiful world out there for you to experience, and you're missing it because you're busy beating yourself up about things that have already happened. Honey, they've already happened for you. It's already happened. It's done. It's done. Put a fork in it. It's done. It's time to move across the bridge and away from these destructive people, this destructive situation, this destructive way of thinking, okay? You deserve so much better. You're a good person, okay? You're a really good person. I don't think you realize what a good person you are. Um, and I think that's probably why you're in the situation you're in. You've been taken advantage of and you've kept your mouth shut uh, when people have been bad to you. Listen, Auntie Amy gives you permission to tell people to fuck off when they're horrible to you. Just tell them I said so. <laughs> you don't have to take shit from nobody. I don't care who they are. I really don't. No one has a right to make you feel small. No one has a right to treat you badly. Okay? No one. I don't care who they are. I'm serious. Okay, let's get some more cards here. Okay, we have... To become more fluid, add wine. <laughs> to chill, try an ice cube. <laughs> I love these cards. Okay, you guys, you guys need to chill, all right? You need to have some fun. Lighten your energy up. I'm seeing the hangman card from the tarot deck in my head. So I'm seeing like, you guys just need to like take a new view. You know, if you partake of wine, maybe you guys need to have a glass of wine. And go out and look at the beautiful ocean or the beautiful backyard or the beautiful dirt pile on the side of your house. Whatever it is, you know, like put life in perspective. It's done. Whatever happened, happened. It's done. It happened. Now it's time to give yourself a chance to move forward. 
It really is. There's so much more ahead of you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care. There's a whole new chapter being written for you. It's like group two. You guys may find some messages in group two for you. Okay. We have keep your word. Something so right about that. Okay. This is something that you should expect from the people around you. Okay. You should expect people to keep their word. Okay. I think that's been a major problem. I don't think pe people have told you things and they haven't kept their word. And I feel like you have. I think you're loyal to a fault. Leo energy, Libra energy, Taurus energy. Um, I, I just feel like you go to bat for people, cancer energy. Um, and I feel like sometimes you get taken advantage of past situation here um and maybe you beat yourself up for it like how could i be so stu so stupid how could i let someone take advantage of me listen being open and being giving is a beautiful thing right it's horrible when you get taken advantage of so you need to be more protective of your energy but don't lose that giving quality okay it's very special but you need to protect it and you need to allow people into your energy who will protect it, who will not take advantage of it, okay? And yes, you will have parasitic energy that is attracted to you. Friendships, workships, situationships, romanticships, family ships, you name it. They're going to be attracted to you because you have that. You have that energy. But as you learn to protect yourself, you know how to keep them away. Once you get across this bridge, You'll know. You'll be able to feel it. You have empathic abilities here. And you just need to learn how to discern this energy. I feel like empaths sometimes get very caught up in being giving, like holding space for people. And they do it for everyone else but themselves. You have to learn how to hold space for yourself. When to be receptive to other people's energy. When to turn on empathy and when to turn it off. When to hold space for yourself. I feel like right now, you need to be holding space for yourself. Feel your emotions. If you're sad, be sad and purge it. Cry. It's okay to cry. But some of you guys, y'all need to get angry. Y'all haven't been angry about this past situation. You've been beating yourself up about it. And you need to get angry because I feel like you got taken advantage of. And it makes me angry for you. But I've been there. I know what it's like to be taken advantage of by people who love you. And who you love. Well, you think they love you. You may not know if they love you anymore. But understand that, you know, toxic people do toxic things when they love you. Okay. Um, and that's a whole nother story. But it's difficult. It's, diff it's a difficult reality to come to terms with people who you thought loved you, who you loved them when they take advantage of you. It can just make you question everything and you can get into the cycle where you beat yourself up about it and you need to let it go as much as possible. Listen, I tell people this all the time. You can dog ear it. You can go across this bridge and just dog ear the page of that book and, and you can bring it with you if you need to look at it again. Okay. You're allowed to make your own rules. You're writing the next chapter. All right. Let's get another message for you. It's better than sitting around doing nothing. Meditate. Okay, you guys, you need to balance out your energy. So meditate. Meditation is, there's different forms. Listening to music is a form of meditation. Actually sitting on the floor, cross-legged, you know, doing all that chanting, that's meditation. Mudras is, is doing mudras is meditation. Tai Chi is meditation. Walking is meditation. Cooking can be a meditation. It really is about intention and focus. So if there is an activity like art that you get in flow with, that means you're completely engulfed in the moment in it, that can be a form of meditation. Okay, but give yourself a break. Meditating is really about giving your vessel uh, like a time to relax, giving your mind a place to go to kind of relax into a flow, into an energy. And I feel like that will help you ground. Some of you guys just really need to get grounded. You need to ground a couple times a day until you can get across this bridge. It will help you focus because I feel like you need to become more self-focused. And I know people in your life will be like, you're so selfish. All you do is think about yourself. It's not selfish to think about yourself. That's a lie. 
this thing about we always have to be focused on people outside ourselves is wrong. You, all you know for sure, our consciousness inside our head, all we know for sure is our own experience. And so everything begins with us. And if we are not okay in our head, in our bodies, in our vessels, then our experiences are very, um, they're seen through that filter of not okay. So if we can get peace, tranquility, tranquility and balance within our vessel, within our mind, then we can see the world in a different perspective and getting across the bridge is much easier. Okay. All right, group three, that's what I got for you. I hope this resonated. If it did, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd love to have you as a member of my tribe. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical creatures next time. Bye, guys.